excited because it went from being like two degrees here in Wisconsin to like 50 degrees. And then I woke up this morning and it's like 15 degrees and uh, <clears throat> really snowy. So here I am thinking, oh snap. Spring is here. Fucking psych. Ugh. Got me pushing the dumpsters. All right, we're good. Boom. We got uh, head, uh, Jose's head. Now we got all that situated outside. Camaro's looking fuego. All we gotta do today is a lot. So where we left off, sedan likely going to try to source some factory lines just because they're a little more banged up than i had hoped for so we're going to try to call up honda and source out just some factory replacements uh, i don't want to mess with you know putting unions on fuel lines and using rubber hose this that and the other the previous owner used some sort of not even fuel line it's like just vacuum line so it's getting soft and I don't like that, especially because this thing's likely gonna see ethanol. So just gonna try to source new fuel lines, get that get that rocking and rolling. Don't have to worry about it. We have an oil pickup gasket that came in from Honda. So I'm gonna go pick that up over at Honda and uh, we can get the windage tray and the pickup all buttoned up. Which reminds me, I left the tray in the ultrasonic overnight, so that's probably ultra warm right now. So we'll shut this sucker off. That's... Actually, you know what? Let's run it through another cycle. Yeah, we'll run that through another cycle. Let's just pretend like we meant to do that. Uh, we got Jose's car, or sorry, Jose's head back from the machine shop. Dirty, dirty, dirty spark plugs. We're going to go ahead and swap those out. But we had a vacuum tested and it passed with flying colors. Um, so I guess I'm just really good at lapping valves that are super pitted. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but no, for real, those, those valves were super, super pitted up and it had me concerned there for a second because I didn't know if I lapped them far enough and this, that, and the other. So got all that tested, that passed. We picked up our 82 millimeter GSR rods and pistons so these were used um actually i got this this whole block on basically trade um the rings the bearings were obviously not too hot as you could see so i'm gonna swap the bearings out i actually had them put arp hardware on this thing or these rods anyway so pop out the uh, factory rod studs and we put arp studs in and uh had them a line hone all that so we're gonna get that uh probably buttoned up soon might hand polish the crank because it's pretty polished already i just because of the way the bearings looked i might just hand polish them um deep clean them pretty good and then uh you know slap it all back together with new bearings and rings so we'll get that uh gsr whenever we get some free time we'll get that thing plugging away um I haven't really decided what I'm going to do with that yet. I guess I might just hold on to it until somebody needs one or who knows, maybe we'll pick up a little project car and see what we can push out of a factory rod piston with ARP rod studs. I don't know. But as of right now, that's what we got done last night. So, um, this B18B1 guy dropped off a Type R final drive 
or sorry, Type R Differential LSD with ring gear. So we have a GSR transmission that I completely refreshed. I, I was going to put it in the sedan before we ended up getting this uh, Quaffy LSD GSR transmission for it. So probably going to pull out the factory GSR diff and then do some research on cap uh, compatibility with the GSR final drive and see if we can't just swap diffs over uh, without you know messing with the input shaft or anything like that. I'm hoping that's the case. I'm hoping that's what we can do. I've never actually thrown a factory type R uh, final drive, or sorry, factory type R differential in with a GSR final drive. So that's gonna be a learning experience for me um, and hopefully we can make it work because all we have is GSR and LS stuff around here. No type R goodies because we ain't that special. Got ourselves a clean one in. CSS B18B1 bottom end. Uh, unknown on what these pistons are. I have to look up the part number. Um, it's got some H-beam rods, obviously billet pistons, and unknown what bearings they are. This build, this whole bottom end was put together by another shop. So all I'm doing is I'm gonna be pulling the oil pump off and I'm gonna see if it's sealed because I'm not seeing any RTV along these creases and usually when you when you throw RTV onto the surface of a pump or a mating surface in general and you tighten it down it mushrooms out right it spreads out and you start to see it kind of come out to where the the mating surfaces are so I'm gonna go ahead and pop that off and just make sure that it is sealed um, just better to be safe than sorry and the customer would like me to do that just for peace of mind so we're gonna go ahead and do that um, though you could see on the rear main seal they use black RTV I don't know if you could see it the lighting's kind of not too good but there is black RTV mushrooming out from the rear main so and it does look like they put a new rear main seal in there and uh, when I pop the pan off this is the a new pan here that they had put on had me put on his old pan is right there I think uh, but when I pulled the old pan off it looked phenomenal in there so whoever put this together did a pretty good job um, very clean very tidy just the way I like it and the cross hatching was done very optimal 45 degree pitch so this was done 100% how I would do it uh, piston wall clearance doesn't seem too sloppy again I don't know what the specs are because I have to pull it apart to find that but I did go ahead and polish up all the surfaces because you know I like to do that so Post mount, tensioner, water pump. I uh, polished those up real good. The alt upper alternator, lower alternator, transaxle. Oh, he's got a little tape here. I gotta pull that tape off and polish this surface up too because I just like to have everything nice and clean. Any mating surface, I like to have clean. Um, you know, if it's dirty, sorry, if it's dirty or if it's clean, I don't think it really matters too much, but I just like to have everything super clean. One thing that I did notice that was super critical about these things is uh, where the thermostat housing bolts to because you utilize a thermostat ground. I've actually used, uh, I'm sorry, I've let these, okay, let me restart that. Back in the day when I first started putting these things together, um, I wasn't cleaning surfaces very well, right? Um, and not only did I every once in a while have a leak, at a gasket uh, or I'll have like you know adhesion issues with RTV that kind of thing but particularly this thermostat housing where it bolts to on the engine right there I'm fascinated with getting this tape off just give me a second here um, where I had this was uh, sorry where I had the issue was these were not cleaned up and when I had bolted the housing to here uh, I thought everything was kosher, right? So plugged everything in, got the ground set up, cleaned off the ground terminal, the ring terminal that bolts to the top of the thermostat housing. I put a new bolt on there. You know, I just made sure all the contact surfaces were super clean. And this is a personal car of mine, and I was having issues with the, the vehicle, like just 
sensors weren't working uh, sometimes the car wouldn't start very well uh, just a bunch of weird issues it was like a bad ground right well come to find out I had pulled the thermostat housing back off and I had a theory that if I just cleaned up these surfaces on the, the thermostat housing and the bottom end maybe just maybe they were so dusty and corroded and just gunked with garbage that it wasn't making a good ground right so I did that plugged everything back in and it worked phenomenal issue was totally resolved and ever since that that situation had occurred now every surface doesn't matter I just clean them all right so I do all of them upper brackets for the uh, lower brackets for the alternator the transaxle obviously thermostat housing um, tensioner the post mount all of it right just because it's nice so Anyway, now that that rant's over, this engine I'm going to be putting a head gasket on. Checking the pump like I told told you about. I'm going to be putting the timing kit on here, a new water pump, the post mount, the, the thermo, uh, sorry, the uh, tensioner pulley, timing belt. I'm going to be putting a windage tray and a pickup on this because it, it arrived with none of that installed. So I'm going to be head, do, going ahead and doing that. Putting a probably a factory OEM oil filter. I have yet to see what he has provided in the box, but um, I love to go with OEM Honda filters. They're really cool. Look up the science on those versus like a Fram, a mobile one, or whatever, and you'll see the difference between the two designs. Um, anyway, so head gasket, I'm going to put a head on it. We're going to be going with some BC cams in this, so some Brian Crower turbo cams. Um, I have the cam sheet, the data sheet for those cams, so I'm going to be degreeing this engine. I'm going to be throwing my whole degree wheel setup on it, getting it all dialed in, and, uh, you know, hopefully show you the whole process on that procedure. These things are super, super slick. A lot of people disable them or delete them, I mean, not disable, but they're handy for when you're doing ignition timing or if you're doing uh, cam timing like I am. So we're gonna be doing that, getting this thing ready. Probably slap the hat on after we, or the head after we uh, do some uh, inspections on that, and then start the degreeing process. Lucas got all the lines tucked away, kind of. Here, let me grab the light. Got it all uh, solidified, mounted, buffered, far from uh, acceptable from a professional standpoint, but. It will do, and for what it is, I think we took someone else's mess and made it phenomenal. So, oh, it was already zip tied? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, all this surface rust, we're going to go ahead and wire wheel all this off, get it all flap disc. Probably this too. Get all that done. Thread chase these threads here. Um, but yeah, you can see what I was talking about. These lines, they look proper in here but then they start to get questionable and then boom like what the heck is going on who does this well let me tell you who does this I got the car from Milwaukee if that says anything so um, anyway don't don't cancel me but we got all these lines we got to tidy up get them all good to go they're super rubbing on everything so we're going to do some insulation like we're doing right there. Basically cut some hose and then make a slit down the middle, hug the line with the hose, and it acts as a buffer for the uh, the line to whatever we're mating it to. So we're going to do that. It's only temporary until, you know, the car's done and driving and all that good stuff. We all have fuel lines to run yet. So we got the feed line disconnected up there. The return line is disconnected. You can't really see it, but over there. Um, we're gonna leave the EGR ventilation hose or whatever that is, just the way it is. It can rust away over time, we don't care. Um, we're gonna replace these tow arms because someone broke a volt off. So we're gonna fix that up, get that going, but we hope to have this thing pretty solid and hopefully be able to throw an engine into it at some point this week. It also needs a wheel bearing. It's hard to hold the light in the camera at the same time, but the wheel bearing's bad. So 
So we're gonna get a wheel bearing for it. And then this is the line that we're gonna replace on this corner because you can see it's starting to rust. Probably throw a new fuel filter at it. Um, aside from that, we got a leaky brake line back here. So we'll probably pop that bolt out and then replace the uh, copper washers because that's likely what it is. Just a copper washer issue. And then, uh, yeah, a lot of rust prevention, line repair, and preparation. Actually, I got a flashlight. Boom! Good to stick them right in, right? That's sick, dude. What's wrong with this picture, Ted? We ain't got no valve stems. <laughs> what would it be? 10 PSI? 40 PSI? Or what? I'm feeling 40 PSI. You missed all that, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna look sick. Diego's fantastic work. Nick says he's, he doesn't approve, though. He don't like it. Yeah. He prefers this. Yeah. When you have offset wheels, make sure you put them in the right area. Yeah, make sure you put rears to front and not front to rear. Because when you're running offset wheels... I'm literally taking this